Now, a widow who lost her husband to a gambling addiction is urging the government to stop online betting companies from giving away free bonuses, which allow you to bet without depositing any money. Luke Ashton took his own life in April after he started gambling again while on furlough during lockdown. Jane McCubbin has been speaking to his wife, Annie. I looked out of the window and his van wasn't there. And then the, the panic set in. I rang the police and they came round and took a statement. Around about four o'clock on the, on the 22nd of April, I looked out the window and two police then got out the car. And the way they walked in, I knew what they were going to say. Annie's husband, Luke, had taken his own life. She had no idea why until police handed back his telephone. Oh, gosh, I can't even describe the shock. I saw betting activity that must have consumed him from morning till night. It just escalated, it became uncontrollable. And I knew, I knew why he'd done it. The Gambling Commission estimate there are around 350,000 problem gamblers here in the UK. Luke had previously beaten an addiction, but when lockdown hit, the 40-year-old was furloughed. That's when Annie says the first of many free bets landed in his emails, and Luke was drawn back in. There's no doubt about it. The only people that knew about Luke's addiction were Luke and the company, and at no point did they step in and do anything about it. There was um, a free bet that dropped into his account the, the day he um, disappeared. Uh, by that point, he'd already, you know, decided on what he was doing. Last year, a House of Lords report found that for every person with a problem, six more were harmed. That's two million people harmed by divorce, crime, loss of work, of homes and, ultimately, loss of life. That report found that 60% of gambling companies' profits come from the 5% of customers who have a problem, and studies show COVID made online gambling numbers soar. Free bets. Search free bets online and you'll find a staggering number. On just one page, offers from 54 companies. £1,700 worth of free bets if you were to sign up. Mm. Mm. And that's just the first page that pops mm. up on the internet. It, it's, it's terrifying. There's no other way, word for it. It's just, it, it's terrifying. They are inducements, so they're, they, are, they are the free cigarette or the free shot of heroin. It's your first shot of heroin, isn't it? Liz and Charles Ritchie set up the charity Gambling With Lives after their 24-year-old son, Jack, took his own life in 2017. They and Annie want to see free bets banned. For some people, that will be their start of their journey into addiction. We set up Gambling With Lives to warn other parents because nobody warned us, because there is no messaging. And I've spoken to so many mums and dads who say to me, I warned them about road safety, I warned them about sexual predators, I warned them about drugs. I didn't know there was another predator out there to warn them about. Annie is pushing for change in the name of her husband just as the government reviews current legislation to make sure it is fit for the digital age, the government told us. Legislation was passed in 2005 and was quickly outdated by technology, which put a casino and a bookmaker in the palm of everybody's hand. The Betting and Gaming Council told us promotions are an issue for individual operators, but added the industry is determined to protect people and the rate of problem gamblers has remained stable for the past 20 years. Free bets. They're not designed to give anyone anything. They're not designed to be free. They're enticing people to open accounts and potentially they, they cost lives. Desperately, desperately sad stories there. We're joined now by Matt Gaskell, who is the clinical lead for the NHS Northern Gambling Service. Morning to you. Hi, Matt. Morning. I almost don't know where to start with that, because I know what we're seeing there are just a couple of stories, but the problem is bigger than that, isn't it? 
why are people getting to the point where they feel so desperate they can't carry on living? Well, the background to this is we've got a rapacious gambling industry uh, with a £1.5 billion advertising marketing campaign. We're all anaesthetised to the normalisation of gambling. It's embedded now in our culture and our society. It's not a normal commodity industry. This, this is a harmful industry. The, uh, the desperation, the misery, the suffering, and as we've seen, even suicides, um, are not uncommon. Um, and I think the whole country has fallen into the trap that's been set by, by the gambling industry. And we don't have the laws, we don't have the regulation in order to protect um, usually young people, we're, we're particularly concerned about young people, and of course in recent years it's online gambling, it's everywhere. We've got a super casino in our pockets, we take them everywhere we go. So it's difficult to know where to begin with the, the, you know, the depth of, of problems that we've got. You see a lot of people in, in really awful situations. Are there sort of similar triggers as to where that addiction starts? I think we often focus on individuals as if we can, we can find our answers by sort of poking around in people's lives. I think what we need to do is to take a step back for the government to take responsibility here for the harm that's going on in our communities and to recognise the commercial determinants of health are where we need to begin. We need to protect consumers. It's not, it's not the case that this is, you know, people who've got very, very desperate and difficult lives who are who are sort of falling into this, if you like. This cuts across all, um, all aspects of life. And, we, you know, as I say, we've got the ever-presence of the advertising and marketing, the normalisation. We've got highly addictive products that are immediately available with no barriers, fast, mm. continuous products being used, often in isolation. It's hidden harm. Um, so I think we need to begin with the laws and with the regulation um, rather than thinking about, well, where's this individual? Where's this started? This is about the individual. That's, it's a bit more complicated than that. Talk me through what, what, so what is the very dangerous part of a, the free bet? What is it that goes on in someone's brain that makes them want to do that again? I think we go back to this not being a normal commodity industry. You know, it's, it, it's everyday practice for businesses to think about engaging new customers, for retaining customers, for trying to get as much uh, revenue from an individual customer to get them to consume your product for as long as possible. When you apply that to gambling, and particularly modern commercial gambling, this is not the same gambling industry that it was 20 years ago, you're going to have serious problems. Um, so the way that they present it, you know, free bets, free money, incentives, rewards, putting money into your gambling account, um, we've heard it all the way through to VIP schemes and so on. We're talking about loss-making customers that they're incentivizing and motivating. And I don't know about you, but to me that sounds quite dangerous. We uh, have asked the government for a response. They've said along the lines of the point, uh, they point out that they've already introduced new measures to protect those most at risk, including banning the use of credit cards, tighter age verification checks and cutting the maximum stake on fixed odd betting terminals. Does that sound like a move in the right direction? Is that anywhere near enough for you? It's certainly moving in the right direction. I think uh, gambling on credit was particularly problematic, of course, for obvious reasons, but it's not enough. So the fixed odds betting terminals that you referred to was a successful campaign. Um, the machines in bookmakers that are clustered, usually in our deprived communities, was deeply problematic. But of course, online, you can stake just as much as you could have done on those fixed odds betting terminals, more than £100 every two or three seconds that you're pressing a button. Um, with everybody looking the other way when people are getting into deep levels of harm, the protection just isn't there. So there's a lot more to do with advertising, marketing, sponsorship in, in sports, of course, um, addictive products, the online space. It's just difficult to know where to begin. There's so much that needs of, to change. Of the people who are in trouble, how many of those come forward? How many of those are able to sort of put the shame to one side and actually mm -hmm. speak about the problems that they're facing? Unfortunately, not enough. Um, I think uh, there's about 2 to 3% of sufferers come forward for support. It's incredibly hard to take that step and to admit you can't keep going. Often gamblers think the answer to my problems is to continue to gamble, to get the big win, to get me out of the problems that I'm in. But I think one of the key barriers is shame and embarrassment. And clearly we're making progress with mental health, but I think we need to do a lot more with addiction so people feel much better about coming forward. And we need much better public health messaging to give um, the public the permission, really, to say this is normal, this is not your fault, this environment is not assisting you, come forward and get help. And treatment does work. It does really work. It's trying to remove the shame, isn't it? Yeah, 
and the stigma, yeah. Matt Gaskell, thank you very much mm. indeed for talking to us Pleasure. this morning. And if you have been affected by any of the issues raised during our conversation, you can visit the BBC Action Line website on screen now. Just go to bbc.co.uk forward slash action line for more information and help. Now, tributes have been